In this project, we're going to be covering atmospheric scattering, which is the next natural step in the series on 3D world generation. So what this will help with is uh, when we're looking around at our planets, we get this nice sky. And if we move off planet, we get this slick transition from ground view to space view, and it's all seamless. Now, just to recap, in this 3D world generation series, we've covered quite a bit, starting from basic mesh generation and height maps to entire worlds and some more advanced texturing techniques. Today, we're working on improving the visuals a bit with atmospheric scattering, and we'll cover a few ways to do this. Now, when you see a lot of major engines doing atmospheric scattering, often they're physically based models that try to approximate how light scatters through the atmosphere. These are complicated models based off of real physics, and so they look good, but they're difficult to implement and difficult to control. Or you can go the other way and fake your way through things. We'll do both. We'll cover how those fancy atmospheric scattering models work, and we'll cobble together a bunch of hacks that kind of look nice and give a scattering-like look. You can decide whether you want ultra-realism for your project, or the flexibility that rolling your own shader can give. Beginning with physically-based atmospheric scattering, now, there's been a lot of papers written on the subject, but the cornerstone one is this one, display of the Earth taking into account atmospheric scattering. And really a lot of newer stuff is just figuring out ways to make it fast using pre-computed values and lookup tables. If we start skimming over this thing, it's kind of complicated. Like, really complicated. Code itself is actually really simple once you translate all this crazy math talk to shader code. So there's a couple types of scattering in these models, Rayleigh and Mie scattering. Rayleigh scattering is that scattering from tiny particles in the atmosphere. It's actually what's responsible for the blue sky you see outside, since some wavelengths, the shorter ones specifically, are scattered much more strongly than longer ones. Mie scattering is similar, except while Rayleigh scattering dealt with tiny particles, like really, really small, smaller than the wavelength of light, Mie scattering, on the other hand, deals with big crap floating in the air. So rain, smoke, dust, pollution, whatever. That's what Mie scattering is all about. Now, remember that a planet is just a solid sphere, with a bunch of gas forming a second sphere around it. And as you get closer to the ground, the density of the atmosphere changes which is why you're comfortable breathing at sea level, but you need to bring oxygen with you when you go to the top of Mount Everest. What you're doing is looking out in a direction, and you want to figure out how much light is reaching your eye. And you know that the density of the atmosphere changes depending on your height, and the light scatters around based on particle size and where the sun is. So roughly, if you're looking in a direction, then for every point along that path, you've got to go look in the direction of the light and do a second lookup, a second path. And for every point along that path, you've got to figure out how much light is being transmitted. And all that ends up boiling down to a couple of nested for loops. You can see here in the shader that uh, the first loop here is in the direction of the primary array or the view direction. And then there's a second loop that goes in the direction of the sun. And at each point, we figure out the height off the ground, sum up the optical depth, and then accumulate the scattering at that point. And that gives us a nice, physically accurate sky model that you can kind of just plug in and work with. Now, if physically accurate isn't what you're after, you can get pretty far just by piling a bunch of hacks together that roughly looks right and isn't complex to implement or change. Here, I've got my fake atmospheric scattering shader, and I can enter and exit the atmosphere, rotate around the planet, see the sun make a sort of nice scattering effect around the side, and that's all just a bunch of simple effects piled together. We'll walk through it bit by bit. So here's our basic planet. I'll just use a gray sphere to begin with. So right now all we have is this gray sphere floating in space. If you look at a picture of the Earth, it has this nice little glow around it that we'd like to reproduce. So what we'll do here in the shader code is figure out the intersection of the view direction and the atmosphere. And from that, we can look at how high we are off the ground and then normalize that by the atmosphere thickness. This allows us to composite a ring around the planet. So now we have this nice little glow around the Earth. Notice though that our ring completely surrounds the planet, but with Earth, it kind of follows where the sun is. So in code, we'll just use the dot product between the sun and the normal to mix from blue to a dark yellow for a, a faint glow on the other side. And we'll use this cool wrap technique, which is just a little trick to approximate subsurface scattering. And what that'll do is wrap the light further around the planet. This is looking pretty good. We've got a nice glow going. Let's add that sun bleeding through that you get when you're viewing the Earth from behind. 
what I do is I use the dot product between the view and the sun, but with a much larger atmosphere, and then calculate the height from the atmosphere again. But this time I'll allow it to go much higher than the glow. And finally, we mix in a Fresnel term, which just limits the effect to the edges of the sphere. Now in the browser, this is starting to look kind of neat. You've got that horizon sun effect with bleed over. The last thing is that subtle blue haze as you look closer to the horizon. In the shader code, we're just going to do a straight up fog calculation, the same as what you would do at ground level. On this line, I use the distance from the camera to the planet, run it through an exponential and modulate it by a Fresnel term, like I did with the sun. The Fresnel effect just roughly forces it to get limited to the edges of the sphere. Then I decide the fog color by mixing between a bluish and a yellowish color, depending on the angle to the sun. Now, when you view the planet, you've got that faint haze. So depending on what you need, realism, cartoonish effects, or something in between, you've got options. You can roll it yourself, or you can go with some ultra realistic thing. The cool thing here with our shader is that we can do whatever we want. We can make the atmosphere 10 times larger than is possible. And it's difficult to get the same effect using the realistic shader, since it's not physically possible to have an atmosphere like that. Like always, source code is available, so go ahead and fork it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.